the Bible. In the beginning... But Abraham... Moses looked back at those who followed him. For unto you is born a Savior. And Paul chose Silas and departed, being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God. Hello, friends. Welcome to Bible Broadcasts, vintage stories and hymns from the golden age of radio. I'm John Henderson. Join me for a trip back in time, whether you're a faithful Christian or an interested historian. Today's Bible story is about Paul's second missionary journey, which was with Silas. It comes from an old-time radio broadcast based on Acts 15 to 18, with one detail from Galatians 4. Paul writes that he had an illness when he first met the Christians in Galatia. Also, in Acts, he mentions that he had a vision telling him to go to Macedonia. The narrative of Acts switches from third person in the beginning, Paul went here, to first person, we went here, a clue that that is when the author, Luke, joined Paul. Now, before we get to our story, open your hymnal to number 356, Only a Sinner Saved by Grace from a January 1949 broadcast. What have I gotten but what I received? Grace has bestowed it since I have believed. Boasting is rooted, pride I abase. I'm only a sinner, saved by grace. Only a sinner, saved by grace. Only a sinner, saved by grace. today's story. Chapter 3 on the life of St. Paul the Apostle. My name is Demarius. In my time I lived in the days that followed the crucifixion of Christ, when the Christian faith was a new one, and to many a strange one, and when its missionaries were pioneers. Many of them had known Christ personally, but there was one who had seen and spoken to him in a vision. He was Paul, one of the two men who this night rested in a cave on a mountainside. The other was Silas, one of the new apostles. Now this was the start of Paul's second missionary journey, and this time he was not accompanied by Barnabas. Paul, are you asleep? No. Were you thinking of him? Who? Barnabas? No. I was thinking of what's ahead. But you miss him. Barnabas was a good companion. After all, you and he went through quite a lot together. It was our privilege to suffer. He did not suffer for me, but for Christ. We disagreed, and we elected to go our separate ways. I even respect his loyalty to his cousin Mark. But you don't respect Mark. Oh, he's a nice enough young fellow. But not one I could depend on. I took him with me on my last journey, and he turned back. He could do it again. But I'm glad enough to have you as my companion this time. At least you know something of the country ahead and the people we'll meet. Enough to know that our lot will be a few floggings. And no doubt prison, if not death. Enough to know that we who are Jews will suffer persecution from the Jews. Well, you better sleep. You sleep. I'll keep watch. Then wake me in a couple of hours and I'll relieve you. And keep your sword handy. 
I've heard the sound of wild animals in this neighborhood. Over mountains, across raging rivers, they made their way across Asia Minor. And where they found a village or town, they preached the gospel. Some listened. Many rejected them, driving them away. Until they came to Lystra, where Paul was known. And it was here that Timothy joined them. And now they went across the wilderness of Galatea. And in one place, Paul became sick with fever. Paul, how do you feel? I have felt worse. But you see how the seed of Christ is flourishing in this place. Tomorrow no one will disturb you. Oh, it would disturb me if no one came. In the days that followed, Paul recovered his strength. And it was then that Luke, who was also a physician, appeared in Galatea and came to see Paul. Sorry I took so long getting here, Paul. How are you? Better now, thanks. You might have been too late to even pray over me. I've found my strength, Paul. In Christ. God be with you, Luke. And where's my old friend Barnabas? Is he in this country? I don't know where he is. Which way did he go? Into the wilderness. And where did you go? With you, if I may. I welcome you, Luke. And thank the Lord for giving me such a worthy companion. And they went on. Until they came to Troas. And standing at the water's edge, Paul looked out across the sea toward Macedonia. And so we go no further, eh? Macedonia lies across there. A good many places lay in that direction. I was just thinking... If you once set foot in Macedonia, you might go on to Rome. Rome. There are many roads that lead there, so I'm told. And I'm told it's a place filled with wickedness. There is wickedness closer to us than we'd find in Rome. Most of the cities across Macedonia and Greece. And you would have me go to them? It's something to think about. I, I, I don't know, Luke. Lord. Lord Jesus. Brother Silas, good morning. Good morning. Where are Luke and Timothy? They went swimming. Oh, then they must wait for the news. Silas, we're leaving for Macedonia. Last night they told me you were not sure. This morning I'm quite sure. Now I know we must go to Macedonia. The distance by water from Troas to Philippi in Macedonia is not far. And Paul and the others sailed. And when they set foot there, they saw that many roads from all parts of the world met there. The marketplace was like many other marketplaces they had known. Travelers from far off Persia and India, merchants from the Black Sea, from Baghdad, Jerusalem and Damascus, fakirs, fortune tellers, snake charmers, and there were Jews, Greeks, Romans, pagans, Arabs, Nubians, and fair-skinned, blue-eyed men from countries far to the north. All the smells in the world must be here, and all the sins of the world, too. Well, we expected that. Behold! Behold, these men are servants of the Most High God. Look, who is she? A gypsy or a slave girl? Behold! Behold, these men are servants of the Most High God. Paul, she means us. Did you hear what she said? I know one thing. She's drawing attention to us. How would she know who we are? We've only just come here. Behold! Well, I tell you, these men are servants of the Most High God. How did you know who we are? I defined it. By what power? By the power of the devil that possesses me. What do you think, Silas? She's telling the truth. Possessed? You mean she's a fortune teller? Are you one girl? 
I am many things to my masters. Then be cleansed of this evil in the name of Jesus Christ. Know that you are cleansed? Yes. Dog! And who are you? He is one of my masters. Take your hands off that wench! Stand aside. Stand aside! You dare tell me to stand aside? You! Get out of this land! Poor lodgings, eh? Good enough for swine, and that's about what we are in this place. The crowd in the marketplace at this time of night? It comes from that direction. Oh, Brother Silas, I fear we've made enemies here. Over the cleansing of that girl? We've deprived her masters of their income. And I saw that fellow who snarled at us talking to some Jews. I fancy they'll join forces against us. I think it's already happened. Listen. They're coming here. Open up, or we'll drag you out. Open the door, or they'll break it down. The crowd came for the two apostles and dragged them to the marketplace, where Paul and Silas were flogged in public. And the Jews, fearing that the teachings of Christ would undermine the laws of Moses and Abraham, joined with the Greeks and pagans in persecuting the two apostles. And when the floggings were over, Paul and Silas were thrown unconscious into a dungeon and were chained to the floor with other prisoners. Lord Jesus, I praise thy name for our suffering. Oh, what joy it brings to know we suffer in thy name. Paul, you've come too. Thank God. We're... We're chained. Chains cannot hold us. Even our combined strength will not break these chains. Much less batter down these dungeon walls. Silas. Silas. Have you forgotten the power of prayer? You've seen it. Look to the Lord. They prayed. And even as they prayed, they heard a sound like that of distant thunder. And they felt the ground beneath quiver and tremble. Paul, do you hear? I hear. And I feel. And I know the Lord is answering our prayer. It's an earthquake. It is Christ freeing his servant. And the walls of the dungeon collapsed about the apostles and the chains were broken. The earthquake ended. There was one who was in grievous fear because the two apostles had escaped prison. And this man was the jailer. I tell you not to fear. But did you cause the earthquake? Christ heard our prayers. We prayed for deliverance, and he sent deliverance. Master, if he will have me, I will turn to him. You talk about something you call baptism. Then baptize me in his name, and all my family, and my slaves, and all those around me. When they had flogged me, they put me in prison. Know you not that I am a Roman citizen? In these days, I had not yet met Paul. 
But when he and Silas and the others came to Athens where I lived, then did I meet him, for I became a convert. And he and the others lodged in my house, and I could talk with him. Their culture is the culture of Athens and belongs to the dead past. But the people listen. And hear nothing. I heard. But the others walked away. But only because they tried to reason. Their reason is based on pride and founded on false theories and beliefs. Whereas the culture of Jesus Christ, with all its mysteries, is eternal. God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are one. So, you are leaving? Only I must go alone. With my bare hands, I cannot earn enough to support myself and those with me. I'll have to ask Silas and Timothy to go back. And so he left Athens, disappointed in what he found there. Yet, the seed of Christianity was planted. When he left Athens, he went on foot to Corinth. Silas and Timothy came back with financial help. So, Silas, tell me which way you came back. By the same road we traveled together. And how did things go? Better than we dared to hope. The church is growing even in places where they flogged us and put us in jail. Praise the Lord. And how are things going here? How long has it been since I came here? Over a year. Yes, I would say things are going well here, too. I have even converted some of the Jews. And now do we go on to Rome? No. We must finish here. And perhaps then go back to where we came from. Paul stayed in Corinth longer than in any other place. And when he came back to Antioch, he had been away over two years. But his greatest work was still ahead. Thank you for listening to Bible Broadcasts. Enjoy this week's closing hymns. Wonderful Savior to me, He forgives my sins.
I trod, crying sinner, come to God. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promised him that I would serve him till I die. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Now when I met my Savior, I met him with a smile. He healed my wounded spirit and owned me as his child. Around the throne of grace, he appoints us all a place. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord, Lord, Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promised him that I would serve him till I die. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord, Lord, Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promised him that I would serve him till I die. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord, Lord, Lord. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promised him that I would serve him till I die. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord.
I found a friend in Jesus, he's everything to me. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. The lily of the valley, in him alone I see. All I need to cleanse and make me fully whole. In sorrow he's my comfort, in trouble he's my stay. He tells me every care on him to roll. Hallelujah, he's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. He'll never, never leave me, nor yet forsake me here, while I live by faith and do his blessed will. A wall of fire about me, I've nothing now to fear. With his manna he my hungry soul shall fill. And sweeping up to glory we'll see his blessed face, where rivers of delight shall ever roll. Hallelujah, he's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. He all my griefs has taken, and all my sorrows borne. In temptation he's my strong and mighty tower. I have all for him forsaken, and all my idols torn. From my heart and now he keeps me by his power. Though all the world forsake me, and Satan tempt me sore, through Jesus I shall safely reach the shore. Hallelujah, he's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my
next week on Bible Broadcasts. And when all hope had been abandoned, and we had given ourselves up for lost, Paul spoke to us. Fear not. I tell you to fear not and be of good cheer. There will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. If you'd like to help out this podcast, give it a five-star rating and review. Thanks.